and you also you will also get a notification that this meeting is re is, re is being recorded. So um, yeah, just wanted to let you all know. But thank you very much for coming. I'm just gonna really quickly hand it over to Tola for uh, to dive in and you know take us through the process. Tola, are you ready for us? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds good. I'm sure you should be able to share your screen. Yeah, 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 I think they can. All right, thanks a lot, Yinka. Um, thanks everyone for being a part of today's bootcamp and thanks for being a part of Logo March um, 4. It's good to see, I can see some familiar faces here and um, some familiar names, even though I'm not seeing faces to them. But it's good to have everyone and um, it's good that we are having this recorded. Um, today's bootcamp is generally going to be, we are going to be going through the process of, of logo design. And this process I'll, I'll be sharing with you is meant to help you when working on logo designs generally, not just for working on logo design during the course of this logo match. Um, it, it's something that should help you um, with your logo design process, even when you're working with your clients. And it's, it's very important that we do this. Um, I don't think we've done anything like this in previous logo match because we, um, this, this, this year we are, we are focusing on three things. And that's why we have our strap line as think, create, learn think, create, learn. After this year's logo match, we should have um, exercised you with your thinking ability. Um, we should also have tested you in, in the areas of, in the, in the area of creativity. And also you should have learned something either from the work you've done or from all, what other people have done. Those three things are very important. And I, I guess, those are the three things that are involved in any design process. Um, and then they must be in that order. Think, create, learn. Sometimes we have it in, 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 the, in an order that doesn't really help us. So sometimes we, we have it as create, think, learn. And so we are so quick to want to create and we are so quick to want to jump on our computers and launch Photoshop and launch Illustrator and just start working on that project. And we kind of see the thinking phase as very boring or we, we, just, we just feel the pressure from clients to feel like, oh, we need to get on on this um, project, this logo project I'm working on and just start seeing results. Um, but the thinking phase is very important. It's very important because it kind of shortens that creation stage. And there's a stage, the last stage of learning is also very important, which I, I feel a lot of designers uh, have a, a problem with. And learning has to do with getting feedback, whether from your colleagues or from your clients. So sometimes you work on a logo and you, you, you feel, oh, I like what I have. And what I have has been done well. And the client tells you, oh, I really don't agree with this direction you are going, or we feel this can be better. And a lot of time, because we are so emotional about our work, because we spend so much time creating, we, we, we refuse to learn. And then it becomes, oh, this client is difficult, or this, this, this project is too difficult, too, too many feedbacks, too many kickbacks. But sometimes we need to be able to take these things to learn. So um, very quickly, I'm going to be taking us through, through the process. Now, I must say that one part of this process that I've taken out is the part that has to do with money. But it's a very important part of the process, but it has been taken out because it might take us some time and it's not going to align with, because we are not being paid to do logo match in the first place. So um, that's taken out. But if you would like to have the, the really full extended version of the process, I can add, I can give you a link in the group um, to a video I'd done last year 
that really talks about seven steps to take in the design process. And that talks about everything from being creative to money. So please, um, if, if you're interested in that, then um, if you're part of the Telegram group, and then you get that link to that. But for now, we're going to focus in more on the work. So as much as possible, just um, um, pay attention. Um, I'll try to share my screen here. And while I do, just to say what you're Let's work back. The class has started. Um, host this. Yinka, I'm not able to share the screen because I, I'm using it both on my system and on, and on my phone. So I think the with the phone is telling me that sharing of screen has been disabled. So if there's a way you can enable it from your end so that I can I can get share the screen on your phone. No, no, no. Share, share on on my on my computer. Uh, uh, Is that okay. possible? Let me let me take a look at the session. Okay. All right. So, so, so while Yinka is looking at that, um, now you, some of you might ask yourself, what's the essence of this logo match that we are doing? Um, and because some of you are first timers, some of you are second timers. Some of you have been doing it from the beginning and you're here with us. Um, what's, the, what's the essence? The essence is to build your skills as a logo designer. Build it by working. So design is one of those things that the more you do it, the better you get. That's just the truth about it. The more you do it, the better you get. The more, the more you exercise your design and creative muscles, the bigger they get. So. Um, the essence of logo match is to get you to create and to try to simulate as much as possible a real life experience where um, you can work on a brief that is very similar to what you would work on um, um, as, as a designer in today's real world, to get you to think, to give you a time frame that almost gives you that opportunity to work like it is it is okay let me like I said I should be to share now let me let me try again now okay yeah thanks I can share now thank you very much uh okay let me go through this all right I want to ask can you all see my screen can everyone see my screen Yes, sir. All yes, right, sir. cool. All right, that's good. All right. So I'm going to look at the process. So I'm going to switch what I, what I was saying. The essence is to get you to build a portfolio that looks real. You know, one of the one of the hardest things I had when I finished from school, trying to launch my design career, was I didn't have a portfolio. So when I went to meet clients, they were like, "What have you done before?" And I was showing them stuff I'd done in class. And they said, oh, this is the assignment you are showing us. You want to see real life stuff. And it stopped me from getting jobs. It was almost like we need the experience before we can hire you. Well, you need to hire me to get the experience. So it was a catch-22 kind of thing. So I was kind of frustrated. So I went back and I started doing work. I started thinking of, of logo design projects on my own. I started saying, okay, let me think of a company. And I say, oh, I want to do a, a logo for um, XYZ Media. And I'll think of XYZ Media, what do they do? Oh, they are into kids animation and stuff. So I'll, I'll come up with a brief and I will just start creating. And before I knew it, in a couple of months or years, I think up to a year, I had done about 200 fictitious logo designs. And, but they looked real because I handled them like they were real. And I started showing that to clients. And um, it was funny because one of the first jobs I got was a job that really paid me a lot. It was a 900,000 um, Naira job. One of the first official commissions I got was 900K. And, it, and, and all they saw was a fictitious portfolio, portfolio. And they thought, oh, man, this guy, you've done a lot of work. We can trust you with it. But they didn't know that they were all fictitious. You understand? But, but, but they saw the work and they were, they were convinced. And, you know, I didn't get a job that, that, that paid that much for, for many years um to come but 
it was interesting that your portfolio does a lot for you if you take it seriously. So one thing I want you to take out of this logo match is take it very seriously. What, what we are telling you to do here, you should be able to show it to any client confidently. Confidently, it's very important that you, that, that you take it as your portfolio and, and you can show it to people because we're giving you company names that sound real and we expect you to just put everything into it. Um, so yeah, we shall be going through the process and um, the process of logo design. So I'll get, I'll get right to it. The first thing you're going to encounter when um, designing a logo is the brief. The first thing should be the brief. It should be the brief. Um, I, I can't, I, I, I really, I really, it, it, it shocks me how many times I ask, I ask designers, do you have a brief? When they say, oh, I'm working with this client and I'm stuck. And I ask them, okay, can I see the brief? And they say, oh, we don't have a brief. I don't have a brief. The person, they give me a brief. They just told me the name of the company is Black Badger and Friends type, you know, um, Black Badger and Friends supermarket. And they were like, ah, um, do a logo for us. We would like you to use color, color blue. And like, that is not a brief. That is not a brief. The first thing you need is a brief. And a brief is something that a client gives you. A client gives you at the beginning of a design process. This is what, this is what actually launches the design process, a brief. A brief is information about a company or an individual that wants to embark on a design. And, um, it's very important that when they give you this brief, now this, now this brief can be a one pager. Sometimes some people have extensive briefs that are two pages, three pages, but it's important that you take time to read through the brief and understand what the brief requires of you. If you do not understand the brief, then you started building your design process on a very faulty foundation. The brief is absolutely important. It is what you refer to at stages of design when there seems to be conflict of direction. So you can say, okay, let's go back to the brief. What does the brief tell us? The brief can save you a lot of hassle along the way, or even at the end of the design process. Where I, okay, let's go back to the brief. What you guys tell me, you understand? The brief is very important. And important that you get to understand the brief. Understanding the brief might mean, who are these people? What do they want me to do? Do they want a logo design? Do they just want a logo design? Do they want me to develop other collateral for them? Um, is it a rebrand? You understand? Do they have something existing? Or is this something totally new? You understand? You have to read it and say, what do they require? What are the, what are the possible deliverables that these people want at the end of the day? It's very important. The brief is almost like a legal document that binds you at the end of the day. So as you are working, you are taking what you have on the brief, what you've delivered. And once you deliver everything, then you've done your work. There are some people that are stuck, that have been stuck in design work because the brief was open. It didn't have, it had a beginning but no end. So they just kept on working and working and working and working and working for these clients. And there was no end, there was no end deliverable in sight. You understand? So they went from working on logo to working on business card to working on social media templates to working on brochure. And then there was never a full stop. The client kept on coming and said, okay, then we need this now. We need a calendar now. We need this now. We need this now. A brief tells you what the scope of the project is. So it's important to understand it. And you break it down and you say, this is what the brief is requiring of me. The brief is very important. I will, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be running through my um, presentation a little haphazardly, so forgive me. Um, there's a client I was working with um, sometime last year or two years ago, and you know, I, I developed a document. And you yes. see, I after know. I met with them, I had to summarize the brief. They gave me a brief, it was a long brief, but then I summarized it into a few lines. And this here says, 
the brief, this is me writing, this is not from the client. So you have to come to, after the client has given you their, their brief, you summarize it into something that you can always refer to, to know if you are doing your work well and to keep and to guide you in the direction you should go. So it says here, the brief here to embark on a visual rebrand for Sasala HQ by creating a distinguishing brand identity that best reflects the brand's values and unique personality. The identity, now this, now this is very important. This is what's telling me what I need to do as a designer. The identity must fulfill the following. Should make the brand name easier to read as Sasala HQ. Should exude a sense of professionalism and class. Should be simple, clean, adaptable for various uses. Should not be restricted to hair and, sal and, to hair and salon industry, but allow for easy brand extension. You can see after I had the brief from the client and we met, I was able to distill all they said and all they wanted me to do in their brief to those few lines. And that was a guide for me to start the design process. Now, after you're done with the brief, you go to what is called the discovery stage. The discovery stage. Now, this discovery stage is where you get to know or know the client a little bit better, or get to ask yourself some questions. Now, with, with, with logo math, you know, the, the client is not real. The client is not real with logo math. So you need to imagine that the client is real and try to ask as many questions as possible. Ask yourself as many questions as possible. And, and the interesting thing about this year's logo math is we're not doing 24 hours deliver your logo after 24 hours anymore, you're going to have days to do it right now. And um, in between those days, you're going to have a particular day where you can get to ask us questions. And this way you can get to make some discovery where you can say, oh, I'm confused about this brief, what you said here. Now this discovery, the aim is to answer four critical foundational questions. What, who, why, and where? What, who, why, and where? I tell people this, these four W's solve the problem of design for you as a designer. These four W's solves your problem. If you can answer them well, in the real world, not just in logo, logo, not in logo match world, in the real world, if you can answer these four questions well, it will solve your design problem. You just see that you are working and things are falling in place. I tell people a lot of times, I don't want to say every time, but most times I deliver one logo design to my clients. And it has not failed me in years. So when people tell me, oh, I do five logo options, I'm, it's, very, it's very foreign to me because I've not done it in a very long while. And that's because this discovery stage is absolutely important to me. It's very important that you go through the discovery stage. So you must ask yourself, what does this company do this brand what do they do what do they do what's their name you know the what questions what what's their name what do they do you write that down who who is their audience who is it directed to who consumes this this product or this service you must ask yourself who are they young people old people men women black people white people you must ask yourself these questions who who do they serve? Who sees this product? Who buys it? They must ask yourself, why? Why are they doing this thing in the first place? What's the inspiration behind this company? Why are they doing what they do? Why do they do it? And the fourth question you must ask and get an answer to is where? Where is this company going? Where is this company going? Just like you're working for a school, and this, and this comes to dealing with your real life clients. You must ask them, where are you going in 10 years time? Where are you going? Where do you see yourself in 10 years time? Because a lot of people do not, in 10 years time, they know where they started. Sometimes some of them are, might have gone off at what seems like a tangent, but you see that they started off as this, and in 10 years time, there's something else. Your logo must be able to stand the test of time if you've asked these questions. 
whereby the person is not coming back after every five years. You say, okay, we are doing this now, but what you've done for us has restricted us to this. So let's rebrand. Or let's rebrand and then another five years again. You understand? So it must be something that will last the test of time. And this discovery phase is very important. The what, the who, the why, and the where. You must be able to ask those questions to know where this company is going. The third stage is the research stage. The research stage. And this is what I call getting inspiration and information, where you are collecting inspiration and information. And this is where a lot of designers kind of get it wrong. We see the research stage as the time to go to Pinterest and check out what other people have done. So we go to Pinterest and we're like, okay, I'm designing for a restaurant. So Google or logo, restaurant logos, what they look like. That's not research. Just and that's not research. And that's why we don't create unique identities. We create something that just looks like something we've seen before. And I don't know if you've ever had that feeling when you look at logos and you're like, I think I've seen it before. Well, you know you've not seen it before because it just looks like every other thing out there. Your ability to research is not just about going to see what other designers are doing. In fact, that is the lowest level of research a designer can do, looking at other logos. Because now you're getting like secondary information. It's like somebody has done 100%, you're just going to pick on it and you cannot arrive at anything but maybe 80 if you've done your work well. A lot of people pick on other people's ideas and they fall short. They're like, it, it, it's like 50% as effective as the other people, the people that did originally. You understand? So it's not about going to check out other logos. There's a stage where you go and check out other logos, but not. But, but first of all, you don't want to do that initially. You don't want to do that. Um, I, I remember listening to an interview um, where some people were interviewing 50 Cent in, in, in the prime of his career then. And he said, and they asked him, how was he able to create his first album? And he said, oh, what he did was he didn't listen to any other person. He didn't listen, throughout the time of creating that album, he didn't listen to any other hip hop artist. So he created what came from his soul. So what you heard on his first album, which was incredibly successful, was totally from him. You understand? It wasn't, oh, I heard this sound from this person. Oh, let's borrow this sound. No. He, he was able to look deep into himself and say, oh, what do I want to say? What do I need to say? And that's what research is all about. Gathering information and inspiration. Not from design, but from things that are around you. And things that relate to this particular project you are working on. So getting information and inspiration is very important. So let's assume, and I, I'll give you an example now. You see, I was asked to work on a project for a, a bakery. The bakery, I don't know, they make cakes though. So it's a bakery, I'm a cake shop, whatever. And you see, so I started doing some research. And you see, first of all, I had to get the image of a cupcake. I looked at images of cupcakes. You see, it could have been very easy to just say, oh, um, logos of cake companies, and I would have seen something that would have directed me, you understand, and I would have done something similar to that. But first of all, I said, okay, let me just look at images of cake because this is their product. The logo must go with their product. So I said, okay, the logo should be inspired by the product that people see. You have this should be a subliminal image. So how do I pick the colors for this logo I'm working on? And I now looked at images and I saw this image and I said, okay, I looked at the image of the cupcakes and I was thinking, which one would I like to eat the most? And I saw this one and I showed it to my daughter and I said, and my daughter and my wife and I said, which one would you like to eat the most? And I said, all of them chose this one. And I said, okay, so if this one looks like the most appealing because of the frosting and the chocolate, then let's make the logo look that this way. So, I, so we picked the colors from the colors we had here. We were derived from the colors here. And I looked at, okay, within this, oh, is it the lighter um, pink that contrasts this better or stuff? And I used my picker too, and I just chose, and that's, that's how we arrived at this color. It wasn't really about brown stands for this, green stands for abundance, and blue stands for corporate. No, to be honest with you, to a very large extent, it's about the emotion. 
It's the emotion. So it, it's not always the yellow stands for happiness and this. It has to be sometimes they just see it and just, this just looks right. This looks like the cupcake I ate yesterday. In fact, I feel like eating this logo. You understand? You, you, you have to be, be inspired by things around the brand and not by what other people have done before. Because you know what? Sometimes a company can be in the same category. Companies can be in the same category, but have different essence. The same category, different essence. Like Mercedes-Benz and Volvo, same category, different essence. They are both in automobile category, but Mercedes-Benz is prestige. Volvo is safety. Do you understand? So they are both cars in the same category, but their logos communicate different things. So you can't just say, oh, let me look for car logos and just choose one without knowing what the essence of the company is. And that only comes by doing your research. And you can see that even here, the research was able to influence the icon of the logo. So it wasn't by looking at somebody else's work. It was about looking at something real and trying to get an idea from that. That is what research is truly about. So it's important we go through research. It's, it's, it's highly important. And these are just examples of research that was done that was able to influence a logo. It's just looking at this. And this was for um, a scooter company. And I just said, okay, where could we get the idea? What should I be looking at to develop this icon for this? And I thought of the handlebars. I said, the handlebars, oh, that's unique. You should be able to create something interesting from that. And that's where we said, I was looking at different handlebars and I looked at this one and this one just kind of hit home for me. So I wasn't looking at logos. I was looking at real things. And today it works very well for the company. The logo can look unique because it's not secondary from what someone else had created. The same thing with this company. Um, it's, um, a, it's an education, um, a, a, a collective of people in the education industry and it's called Smart Educators Tribe, people that own schools. I said, oh, what, what is it that depicts education? Books. You see, if I had gone and I'd looked at, okay, let me see logos that illustrate books, I would have done something similar to what someone else had done before. And I just started looking at images. And when I came back across this image, I said, oh, this image is kind of interesting. How can I do flipping of pages? And I was able to ar arrive at this. So you see, when you get inspiration from what is around you, not what other people have done, you come up with more original ideas. I'm not saying these ideas, man, you will never see them in the world, but the thing is that the chances are less. Um, so yeah, so research is absolutely important. The research stage. So as we, as we give you these briefs, it's important that you are able to do adequate research. Look at things. If it's for a shipping company, look at, oh, what do they carry? What, what do cargoes look like? Do you understand? What does a ship look like? What is a, a part of a ship that I could focus on instead of looking at other logos? So I think we have we, we, we'll that idea. And after that, you go straight to the solution. And this is where you start exercising your own influence on the brief. All these other stages, you've been gathering information. Nothing has really come from within you. So you've been gathering information from outside. Now, this is your opportunity to put a little bit of yourself in this project. And uh, So this, this, this is the solution stage. And this is what I call the stage for mood boarding and sketching. Mood boarding and sketching. Now, I'll be very honest with you. These were two things I never used to do very early on in my career. And it, was, it made my work incredibly hard. Because then without, I used to go straight to the computer and just start typing the name. You see, one thing I want you to know is as a logo designer, you are not there to design the name. You are not there to design the name. A lot of us, we design the name. So if they tell you the name is Elephant and Co, the first thing we start seeing is I must put an elephant in this thing. If the name of the company is Purple Rain, 
the first thing we start thinking is I must put some droplets of rain in this logo. No, it's, that's not how they are designing the name. What we should be designing is the personality. So you must understand the personality of the company. It's very important that you understand the personality of the company. That is what you design. You design for the personality because every company has human attributes that are the personalities, that are the core of the business. So you must ask yourself, is it an elite brand like Rolex? or a playful brand like Google, or a serious brand like HSBC, or a conventional brand like Honda, or a rebellious brand like Tesla, or an authority like, what's a brand like, like an authority, maybe IBM, do you understand? You need to start thinking in, in terms of human characteristics. That is what guides you. And, and that's what will guide you in this solution, mood boarding and sketching. Uh, I will still go, I'll go back to the mood board I showed you earlier. This, and this is the mood board I did for a company called Tasala HQ. And you just, the mood board is just a simple document that just helps you be on the same page with your client. It's very important that you mood board. Very, very important. Very important. Um, so that the client knows where you are going and um, you know where you are going. So that's what the mood board is. Here, I have a very good definition of what a mood board is. And um, it says, a mood board helps to bridge the gap between language and visuals, ensuring everyone is fully on the same page before moving into the design phase. It establishes the visual world for your brand to live within, and it drives the design that is to come. Do you understand? The mood board is a direction. It shows the direction you are going. You see, a lot of times when we have issues with clients, it's because we don't have, we never had a mood board. So it's just like looking for a partner for somebody and not telling them the spec you are going to look for. So if you say, oh, I'm going to look for a husband for this person or look for a wife, I'm not going to tell them, oh, you know what? The person I'm going to look for is going to be tall, dark, fat, slim, you understand? Um, you know, fair complexion, dark complexion, you know, so that the person can build it in their mind and know what to expect. Because when they build an expectation that has not been communicated, then you bring what you have. And it's not that what you have is bad, but it's that what you have doesn't fit their expectation. And then they feel like, oh, this is bad. And that happens to a lot of designers. They, say, they come and say, oh, the client doesn't like this thing and I've done a good job. And really you say that they've done a good job, but think that expectations were not communicated. And that's what the mood board does. And so your mood board kind of sets the frame. And where I was going with this is brand personality. You see with this brand, they had a brand personality, which I was able to carve out. Say authentic, classic, premium, strong, Afrocentric. This were, this were things that were more important than hair. They are into hair. But if you see the logo I did for them, eventually it doesn't have anything that shows hair. But you see, the initial problem they had was when they were working with other designers, other designers just kept doing women's hair, a woman with flowing hair, a woman with flowing hair. And they were like, I don't want this now. But they couldn't communicate what they really wanted. It, it, it was left to me to listen to them I know the brand personality they were going for. And you see that the logo that we ended up having had no hair at all. It was an essence that they were looking for, an emotion that they were looking for. So not everybody that is making hair or selling hair wants you to put hair on their logo. And that's one of the challenges we have in logo match. When we like say, oh, this thing is for a pet grooming company. I just, I just did a logo for a pet grooming company. And there was no pet in it. You understand? But what we do is a lot of people just, it's time, it's time to throw in the dogs and the cats and the cows and the pigs and everything. And before you know it, you see animal farm on, in, in presentations. You understand? But think about it. Every other person is going to do that. How are you going to be unique? You must think of the brand personality. So understanding this brand personality was very important. And you can see here that this, this was the info, information I was able to come up with after consulting with the client and doing some research. Brand name, Claire. Industry, hair and beauty. You see, this is where a lot of us stop. 
This is where we stop with finding information. This is enough information for us. Name, industry. And now what clients do, and we must stop clients from doing that. Name, industry. My name is, the name of my company is Exotic Shoes. We make shoes for men. Go and make logo for me. Then you are stuck and you're having creative block. You're not having creative block. You just don't have enough information. Do you understand? And that's why it's important that research discovery stage, very important. We can't stop here because there, there's, this, there's this much to do. We need to go through this much. And this is what makes the work easy at the end of the day. And when I say the work easy, I mean it makes the creation of the work easy. Of course, the discovery stage might take some time. But you see, once you have this right, once you start going to Photoshop, you are just going to assemble things that have been done already in your mind. So just like, and that's, why, and that's how you can get away with doing one, two options, and not five or 20. So if, um, I think some people have their mics. So can anyone mute, mute their mic, please? Um, so here, the mood boarding is very important. The sketching is very important. So um, I, I think, let me talk more about sketching now. I think, we must learn to to sketch and a lot of people it's funny when people tell me they can't sketch everybody can sketch everybody can sketch we are not talking about fine art here we are talking about sketching and people have it confused i don't know how to sketch i don't know how to draw sketching has nothing to do with knowing how to draw absolutely nothing sketching is scribbling and everyone can scribble we are born with that ability, unless you don't have hands. But everyone with hands can scribble. You have a hand, you have a brain, you can scribble. You understand? It doesn't have to be Picasso art. It just has to be, see, sketching does two things. It helps you to loosen your mind. It's like doing push-ups before you run or doing laps. You, you see, if you watch football, when they bring someone up from the bench, you don't tell him from the bench to go straight to the field. No, no, no. He can't. He'll have a cramp. Do you understand? So you tell him, do like two laps. Then those two laps, then he comes and you put him in. Sketching is the laps you're doing, where you're like loosening your creative muscles. You understand? So a lot of times, even when I start sketching, I just start free sketching. Like, it's, it's not a... Um, it's really not guided. It's almost like think about it as sitting at a boring lecture and just tuning yourself out and just allowing your hands to draw. So a lot of times, I might just have a company that is just called Pacific, Pacific, um, Pacific Clothing. And I think Pacific Clothing, okay, P for Pacific, and I just start sketching a P, sketching a P, oh, okay. You see, to be honest, my brain is not really engaged at this point in time. It's just me allowing my hands to get loose and creativity to just flow freely without me questioning it too much. And a lot of times by doing that, I can't look and say, oh, that looks pretty interesting, especially when I try to create letter marks or even word marks. Just write it down and just write, so how many ways can I write this thing? How can it look interesting? And sometimes because you are just allowing the consciousness to flow from your brain to your hands without you second guessing yourself too much. And I'm going to talk about that very soon. You realize that you begin to do very interesting things. It's just like a conversation. Sketching is like a conversation you're having with your pad. The most interesting conversations are the ones that are unhindered. The ones that you're not thinking too much about what you are saying. We are speaking from your heart. Those are the most people you, those are people you find interesting to talk to and you listen to and I'm like, oh, I, I enjoy listening to this person. That's exactly how you're meant to sketch. Where you allow the idea, go, just go. Don't, don't start thinking it doesn't look right. It doesn't look beautiful. Remember, you're not selling the sketch. I'm yet to see a designer that has done a sketch and given to clients and say, okay, pay for that. The sketch is for you. It's not for the client. And that's why I, I kind of have an issue when people glamorize sketching. You know, some people glamorize it and put it on their Instagram page and instead look so beautiful. And people just feel that's how a sketch should look. It should look like an architectural drawing. No. Sketches should be ugly. And when I say ugly, it means that it should be from your heart. 
you are not thinking about the appearance of the sketch. You are thinking of how it should guide you. And when you look at people that make the most beautiful designs, some sketches don't even look like what they've done. But they know what they are seeing in their minds. But just allows them to put it down in paper and sometimes simplify it. And that's why I realized that sometimes the ugliest sketches, the simplest sketches make the most beautiful logos. That's why people that cannot draw sometimes can make the most iconic marks. Because you know what? They are not, they, are, they, are, they have the rare gift of simplifying because they can't draw. But people that can't draw make the most complicated logos because they are trying to put every detail in there. And sketching is about simplifying. So it's important that you sketch. So when we give you briefs, take time to sketch. But what I really want to emphasize is don't spend too long sketching. Don't spend too long sketching. Remember, you're not trying to build your artistic skills. You're trying to get a direction. And a lot of times, from my experience, I could be wrong here, but from my experience, our first thoughts, our first ideas are usually the purest but we don't trust them enough. And I want you to be able to trust your creativity. Trust your creativity. So when you, when you sketch an idea and you are feeling that first idea, don't second guess yourself. Once you start feeling it, just like, oh, this looks interesting. Start developing that. It saves you time and it helps you to be able to trust your ideas. Have you ever done something before whereby you were working on a logo for somebody and you had a first idea? And you're like, ah, oh, it's too simple. They won't like it. And you don't pay that. You go and do something more complicated. And they're like, we don't like it. Can you go back and do something? And then you go back to the first one. And you're like, wow, this is nice. We like this now. You see, that first one is the purest, especially when you allow it to flow. So it's important that you sketch your ideas and you trust and you can trust your ideas. You understand? So don't spend too much time sketching. Once you arrive at something you find interesting, then move to the next level, which is design, the design stage. Now, this is a stage we are all used to. We all know this stage all too well, but we are all too eager to get into this stage when you launch Corel Draw or Photoshop. I really hope you're not using Photoshop to design logos from scratch, but just for Corel Draw or Illustrator. Uh, Photoshop, as the case may be. I started using Photoshop to design logos, and that was a big mistake I made. That was the first time I heard about raster images and vector images, and I learned the hard way. When I had this client, you see, when I was designing my own briefs, nobody was printing it out. So when that 900K client came, they had to print it out on a 20 foot by 10 foot billboard. And then they gave me, and then they told me, ah, that's what I said, your logo is blurring out, it's not clear. And that was the problem now. And every time they had to do it, on a, I would go back to my system and increase the canvas and send it to them. And then my, my system started to crash because they would tell me, okay, this time I want to do it on a 50 feet by, ah, ah, and I'll go back and increase. Then I started to say, uh, uh, something was wrong. And I had to go and research and I said, okay, this is where learning comes in. I said, okay, I was doing it the wrong way using Illustrator, using Photoshop to design logos, and people could not scale it up. So I started using Illustrator to design, and that allowed me to be able to send those files to the printers, and they could blow it up to any level they wanted to. So that's very important. So if you're using Photoshop, please Photoshop is not a tool, unless they've improved on it now or done something to it, to design logos. You want to look for something more vector-based, like Corel Draw or Illustrator or whatever is out there, GIMP or whatever, I don't know. There are a lot of software. I'm not really concerned that much about the software, but about what it can do. So it must be vector-based. So the design phase is where you take your um, design and you start fleshing it out. You flesh it out and start creating in um, whatever software you have. Um, now, one thing you'll realize and people get discouraged by this, is sometimes what you end up with doesn't really look like. Sometimes what you sketch, that's okay. Remember, your sketch is a guide. And that's why I call this stage creating and revising. Because some things will happen when you, when you, when you launch Illustrator, either out of a sense of not being able to achieve what you sketch, you might have to make some compromises. Sometimes those compromises take your work. 
make your work better. But you will have to revise. There will be some revision. Or just saying, oh, this thing looks better in drawing. But when I started, or when I kind of went into you know, in, in Photoshop, and I have to compromise on the font. I have to, you know, depending on your skill set, some of us are not very good at type creation. So you're not good at creating custom types, typefaces. Some people are excellent. When they draw a type, they can create it in Illustrator. Some of us cannot do that. I'm not great. I'm not great at that either. So sometimes I would have sketched a particular typeface. And then I have to look through my font to see which one aligns with the typeface I've done. You see, that's okay. That's okay. Because sometimes you end up with something better. I say, okay, this looks this looks much better than what I had. So don't be don't give up that, oh, what I sketched, it doesn't really look like what I what I'm designing right now. Sometimes it wouldn't look like that. But that's where this, this stage is called creating and revising. So you must be able to make some revisions. And this is the stage where you kind of introduce colors. But remember, with the colors, you've decided it from your mood board already, from this stage. The colors don't come in at this stage. That's the problem we have. We start to think of which color looks, looks good for this thing I've done. No, the colors come in here. You already thought of the colors here. Because here, you know, you, you, are, you, are, you are creating the colors for the personality, not for the design. So you can see here in my mood board, immediately I went to the colors. And the colors were guided by what I said here. So you see that the colors, what they mean? Luxury and class. What is here? Classy, premium. So I had to use black. Simplicity and trust. So you, so you, so you look at this here. It says, if you look at my um, description of the brief, it said it has to be simple, clean, and adaptable for various uses. Accent color. So it should be an accent color, um, authenticity and excitement. And you see authenticity is here. So I decided my colors before I started designing. So when I was designing, I already knew the colors that I was going to use. So it wasn't a matter of I've designed now, let me test yellow, let me test blue, let me test, you're not testing. It's informed at the end of the day. Uh, um, so you go to design stage, create, revise, and you do what you have to do. Um, I'll just take you through this mood board simply here. After this, I now went to the logo styles. Now remember, I told you a time will come for you to start looking at other logos, but it's not not at the research stage. At the mood body stage, you start looking at other logos. And so here you are showing what you feel the style of the logo would be like at, in the long run. So you're like, oh, what are, people, what are people out there that have this style that I have talked about here? So you kind of, this way you start doing some other type of research we have to start looking at. So you, so you start looking at, okay, logos that, have, that look classy, Logos that are simple, logos that look authentic, stuff like that. And I kind of looked at these guys and I said, okay, I think these guys would look something. Like, I remember at this point, I had not created anything in Illustrator. I said, oh, this, I, I think the logo will have something of this kind of look in the long run, something like this. And I kind of looked at products and I said, okay, because I feel what they have would be on products like this and it should be clean and simple and stuff. So the logo should be clean and simple and complement this. So I kind of looked at images too. And I said, what kind of images would they be placing this logo on? Because they make hair, I kind of looked at this. And I said, okay, these images are clean, they're simple. They're like kind of sophisticated. So I feel the logo should go on this. Whatever I create must look good with these images. Must look good on these images. You understand? And in the end, this was what we ended up creating for the company. And you can see here that there's a match. You see, they do, it, it, they almost look like this, these models are for a different company, but it looks like they belong to this company. And that's where you kind of look at it and say, okay, am I doing it? Because this, this, this was at the end of, of um, the design where I kind of put it and I said, okay, let me test if I've done a good job. So I took the photos and I put it there and they looked well, they looked good together. And I said, okay, I think this will work. You see, so it's, it's, not, it's, it's not try and error. It's design it should be guided. So you should be able to go through these processes. Um, 
So there was one I wanted to show here, but I don't think I transferred the images. Um, but basically, I get. I, I think you get the point I'm trying to make. Now, the last stage is presentation, putting things into their proper context. Now, for logo match, for us, the work you are submitting to us, you don't need to mock it up because we are focusing more on the logos. So what you're going to be doing basically is a 200 by 200 pixel canvas, white, and put your logo on it in the middle and write your name at the bottom. That's all we need. I, I didn't create a slide for that, but I guess in the group, we'll share a slide that, um, a graphics that shows what we are looking for. That's all we need for your presentation. But remember, you're not doing, this logo match is not just about submitting to Tola and Yinka. It's about creating a portfolio for yourself and making it look real. So I encourage everyone to create a standard presentation for the logos that we are creating. Even though you are submitting just the logos to us for yourself, for your Instagram page, please show standard presentation. I would personally be, would like, and I know Yinka does this to go tag us, logo match and stuff, and we'll go looking through people's stuff and we'll see the ones that are presented. You understand? That's the very essence. So that you can take these things and show them to clients and clients can engage you in real work. So presentation is very important. Put your work in its proper context. Put your work in its proper context as, as, as much as possible. Um, I'll show you some. I think I have some here. These are logos that I created. And while I was creating, I was like, oh, let me put it in context. So there was packaging I had to do. And I was like, okay, I think this looks good on this. But this was in its context. You understand? So I was like, because in reality, a logo is hardly floating in a white background. It goes on something. So it must look good on something. It must look good on things that are affiliated to the brand. And that is what wins the client over at the end of the day. I don't, and I'll show you a logo I don't for a client. So put it in context. Now this logo is a pretty interesting one. I did this logo for a client. And at first I sent him just the logo on a white background. And I, for, I forgot to attach the, um, the presentation that had everything in context. And um, by the time he saw it, he didn't see, of course, I didn't, I didn't send it. So he said, you didn't like it. But I just told him, oh, I forgot to send you an additional email. Go and check it. And he went to check it. And he saw this and said, oh, I absolutely love it. He said, I love it because I can see what it looks like on the bags and what it looks like on our salad bowls. And it made absolute sense to him. A lot of times people don't understand stuff floating in white background. You understand? So you must put your presentation in context. It's absolutely, absolutely important put your presentation in context and people can see what it looks like and that wins them over at the end of the day. So um, presentation is so important and that's the last phase. Um, but, but it's not actually the last phase. I, I'm gonna talk about the phase here that is important for this learning, being able to take feedback. And that's part of what you're gonna be learning in this year's logo match. It's what we've been learning all the while, being able to take critiques because we are going to be critiquing your work. And sometimes you'll be saying some things that you might feel, oh man, it might, might be hard to, to hear. It might be hard because I'm a designer too, so I understand. The truth is it's hard for someone to say, oh, this doesn't look good enough, but please, I beg you to take it in good faith. The reason why Inka and I started Logo Match is not to mock people. The reason we started it is to get you to be the best of yourself as a logo designer. So everything we say comes from a place of love. Everything we say comes from a place of love. We are not here to ridicule anybody at all. So by all means, please come with an expectant heart to learn at the end of the day. And even if your work is not the one put on the stage to critique, because we will be critiquing everybody's work. We will, we will take a select few and then we'll critique, but you can learn from every single person. So please come with the heart of, oh, I want to learn and say, okay, this person made the, mistake, the same mistake I made. So I'm not going to make that mistake in this next work. So if you go through this process that I've highlighted, you will have an interesting time in this year's logo match. 
So at this point, I think I would stop sharing my screen. And um, I think you can. All right, thank you so much, Salah. Okay. This was really good. Like, as we work together, so even I am learning from the days that we are saying. Really good. I thank you so much for how you have broken down these steps and for how you have given the tips and best practices for each of the different stages. So maybe something that we can do is maybe I'll think of doing that if I can get someone to do it. It's just a graphic showing the process step by step. Um, it might just be a simple graphic, just showing you how it goes from one step to the other. And that could be useful for people. But thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, like Tola said, we really hope that you take this process to heart and you use it during Logo March. We want you to have enough practice so that after March, when you are working on your own prog or your own project, you are able to use the process effectively because you've used it, you know, over and over and over again during Logo March. Like he said, I would like to remind us that there are weekly challenges, not daily challenges. So you have time. The truth is time should never be an excuse for you to do process. It should never be an excuse. And that's why we decided to make them weekly challenges so that you can go deep enough, all right? If all you take away from Logo Match 4 is knowing how to use the process in Logo Design, then I think we have done our work. Tola, and I'm sure Tola will agree with me that if people take away only process, then I think we have done our work. So that's good. Now we're going to dive into, we're going to reveal the, the challenge for the Logo Bootcamp. And it's good that we have a good number of people here. Almost every single person that has joined the, the group right now is on this call, which is amazing. So I'm just gonna share my screen now. Um, and then when I will show the image, but I would like Tola to talk us through what the challenge is. Um, Tola, I hope that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. So I'm sharing my screen now. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So Tola, tell us about the right. challenge. Okay. So 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 this is. Um, it's going to be like the first challenge we are going to be working on, and I uh, hope everyone can see it. It's for a brand called Carabina. Carabina. Um, you can see the spelling K A R A B I N A. Now, Carabina is an organization that helps to rescue people in war situations. The organization, the organization works in war-torn places to rescue stranded civilians, provide food and supply, and give medical aid. Now, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Now, Carabina is, is a company that, or an organization that um, um, engages itself in rescue activities, especially for people that are caught in war-torn areas. So you can think of people in Syria, think of people in Uganda, in Ukraine, uh, you know, the Ukraine, Ukraine crisis right now, people in Afghanistan, and you see there are innocent civilians that are caught between the two sides. And sometimes these people need to be rescued. Sometimes these people need supplies. And Carabina is like, imagine like the Red Cross. So you can see Red Cross cannot reach out to everybody. So you have other organizations, There's another organization called White Helmet that do the same thing to rescue people. Now it's very important that, that there are, people are able to identify these people easily. And you know, like Red Cross, Red Cross is very, very easily identifiable in 
any in any situation you can see that is red cross and you can know that's not your position no someone that's going to come and shoot you it's someone that's going to come and help you and that's what carabina wants to be they want to be easily identifiable so don't be identified very easily so the design of the logo should be distinct very important and easily identifiable simple and clean and should communicate hope so it should be something that people should see from afar so so you must think about it it must have a symbol are you all meet your mic please can you meet your mic now it, it, it must have an, an easy recognizable short form that you and you know and you, and think about it war it, it's a war environment so a lot of, you think of the people that are working with this organization will be wearing helmets so it should be something that is easy to put on an helmet and people will see it's something that should be put on a bulletproof vest and people would see put on a van and people would see very easily do you understand it should be clear and simple and easy to communicate and it should by all means signify hope so what does hope mean to you that's what the one thing you must start start thinking about what does hope mean to you what what describes hope to you just like you see a white flag is a universal symbol of peace or surrender let's put it that way um a red rose the symbol of love you understand just think that simple the the the, the, the color and the the object very very simple so you guys think what does hope mean to you at the end of the day um so, so you need to spend some time thinking about this and remember make it simple so hope might mean to you a helicopter throwing down a lad a, um, a rope and someone catching it but you know you can't put that in a logo because that's hard to identify do you understand it's very very hard so you must think very simple what does hope mean to you? And that should be the symbol for this company. So it must be clean, clear, and easy to identify. So um, if, if we have any questions, you will ask questions on the group, you understand? But I think with this information, it's, 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 it's um, good enough for anyone to start to run with and start to think about. I don't know if you can ask any other thing wants to say on this. Yeah, no, I think you covered it perfectly uh, absolutely well so just as a reminder this is the bootcamp challenge submissions are on friday not before friday not after friday they are only on friday and tell us talk about the format all we need is from you is your logo on a 2000 by 2000 pixel image your logo and for instance your instagram or your name or your instagram and your name that's all we need from you so you walk through the process you come up with your submission you submit it on friday and the reason why we're emphasizing this is because we want everyone to be able to focus and do their best work without being distracted by other people's work, all right? Or without being in, inspired by other people's work. So that's why we are strictly for only Friday. And we are putting it on Friday so that the mentors can have enough time going through, selecting you know, the logos that we want to review, and then putting together our live, preparing for the live feedback session on Sunday evening. That is why. Okay, so that is that. Like Tola said, if you have any questions, immediately after this call, we'll be in the chat room. Ask any question, and we will answer the question as much as possible, as much as we can. Now, it seems like there are some people who, I don't know if they registered or have not registered, but they are not on the group. So, if you know someone that has registered but has not yet joined the group, please tell them to check their email or check in their spam. Check in your spam folder. So if you have registered, we sent out the email. 
So make sure you check your spam folder. Your spam folder, you need to just check in your email, whether it's in Gmail. It's one of the options. It's where like in maybe on Microsoft, on Outlook or Hotmail, it's junk folder. So you need to check that folder. You will see our email. The email is from Logo March. You, it has the link to the chat room. Um, that's it. That is what we have. So like I said, if you have any questions, we'll go in the chat. Um, so yeah, I hope it has been a very useful session. Um, we're going to do a lot more video sessions just so because we want the engagement on this year's logo match to be very high. Um, we encourage you all to engage on the group to ask questions of your fellow participants. Um, to remember to remain focused on the challenge. If you are just joining the group, please take a moment to look at the pinned messages at the top of the chat. So that has the, the guidelines, that has the code of conduct, that has the welcome message. Everything you need to know is in those pinned messages. So um, thank you all so much for your time. Tola, I don't know if you have any last words. Um, well, not really. I just want to th thank you everyone for, for taking the time. Remember, this, um, this session, the Zoom sessions are open to everyone. So please, if you want, if you have people that you feel will be interested, designers that you feel will be interested in listening to the Zoom session, they might not even be part of the, uh, um, the Telegram group. But you just feel you want them to listen. They might be non designers, so I just feel you want them to be able to listen in. Please feel free to invite them to be part of our Zoom sessions that we'll be holding every Sunday. Okay. All right. Perfect. And so, for any other person, obviously, we're going to post this video, the, the video of this session. We're going to post the link on the group. The reason why we're doing this is so that in case maybe you missed something during the session, you can go back. Maybe you need a reminder as you are working, you can go back. And not just now, not just this week, but throughout the month of March and even afterwards. So as soon as this call is done, um, you give us some time, we'll process the video, we'll upload the link, but we'll also post the challenge image so you can have the information, the challenge brief, more or less. Okay, so thank you so much, Tola, and thank you so much for everyone. We're really excited to see what you come up with, and all all the best. We'll be expecting your questions in in the chat group so we can answer them. Thank you very much, all. Take care.